If you think this drum solo, which is Neil Peart's most reacted to solo, is his best. You'd be wrong. Many years ago on my blog, theparadiddler.com, I ranked Neil Peart's drum solos from least to best. At the time, there were eight officially published drum solos of Neil Peart and of Rush. Many years have gone by. Rush is done. 2015 was their last concert year. And there are a few more of officially published drum solos. Actually, now there are 11. Actually, there are a few more than 11, but we'll get to that later in the video. But in any case, you know, I went back to revisit the subject and it made me rethink the order of what I thought are Neil Peart's uh, best drum solos. Not his best drum solos. Of his officially released drum solos, what's the worst one all the way up to his best one? If you go through YouTube and you see which drum solo YouTubers react to the most, the one that's generally picked is the one from the R30 tour, the one in Frankfurt, Germany. And that's a really great solo, there's no question about that. But I think many fans are missing out on some solos that are even better than that one. Actually, there are several that Neil Peart published, or Rush published, that are actually better than that one. And what we're going to endeavor today is to rank those solos from worst to best. And that way you can react to all of them if you want, or you can just see the incredible musician that Neil Peart was and how the progression of his solos was presented throughout the years. And we can see if the solos that he did later were necessarily better than the ones before just because he grew as a musician, he was more knowledgeable. Did that necessarily mean that those later were actually better? Or are there other criteria that would determine which solo was better than another? So what are the solos that we're gonna consider? Well, there's 11 of them. And I'm going to list them right over here. I, or actually, I'll just list them on the screen. In chronological order, they are All the World's a Stage from the 2112 tour, Exit Stage Left, YYZ from the Moving Pictures tour, A Show of Hands, YYZ from the Hold Your Fire tour, Counterparts, Anatomy of a Drum Solo on DVD, The Rhythm Method, that would be the Test for Echo solo. You can hear that on different stages. O Baterista, the Rush in Rio solo that he did there in... For the Vapor Trails tour. Der Trommler, which is the aforementioned uh, R30 tour drum solo. This Lag Worker, which is the drum solo he did during the Snakes and Arrows tour. Moto Perpetuo, which is the drum solo he did in the Time Machine tour. In the Clockwork Angels tour, he did kind of a threesome. Like, Where's my thing? Here it is. And then Drum Bastica is like an extended drum solo in Headlong Flight. And then the Percussor, which is the last part of we could call it a three-piece solo in the Clockwork Angels tour. And then the last one he called it, Neil Peart did, The Story So Far. That was the solo in the R40 tour, which is in the middle of Cygnus X1. So those are the solos as they appear chronologically. So those are the ones we're going to rank. So which one of those were was his not-so-great solo all the way to which was his best solo of all of those? Now, there's certain criteria that I'm going to exclude from listing in you know from consideration in these in this in this list one of the things i'm going to one of, one of the types of solos that neil did that i'm going to exclude is anything he did outside of rush i'm only going to rate the solos that he did that he performed inside of a rush context for example anything he did with burning for buddy i'm not going to include any of those solos or you know he did he had a great solo in the Dave Letterman show, uh, I'm not going to rate that one, although that one is kind of like a condensed version of the Time Machine to, uh, solo that he did. So they're same-ish, but obviously the one in Time Machine was extended. Also, the solos that appeared during the anniversary releases, for example, 2112, Farewell to Kings, Hemispheres, and Permanent Waves, or even Moving Pictures now, that's the latest one. I'm not going to include anything from those any solos from those releases. Up until Hemispheres, the solos that he did there were very similar to the ones from, that he did in 1976 during the 2112 tour. So it's kind of, they're similar-ish, so I won't be going into those. And we'll talk about the latest Moving Pictures release, the drum solo that Neil Peart did there on the Live in YYZ show. 
and compare that a little bit to the exit stage left one when we get there. Now there's an interesting phase that Neil Souls went through over the years and I noticed that you could categorize his solos into like three eras. For example, the solos that he performed from Fly By Night, which we don't necessarily have an official release of any solo he did from the Fly By Night tour, which was his first, you know, the second record of Rush, but the first time he appeared with them. From that time to Signals, I call that the acoustic era, where there were no electronics, it was just uh, Neil on his kit with his acoustic drums and all of his uh, percussion instruments, the chimes, the bells, uh, the triangles, and all of that stuff. So I call that the acoustic era. And then the next era, we would have the electronic era, which was from Grace Under Pressure all the way to R30, where he started during Grace Under Pressure incorporating electronics, electronic drums, triggers, stuff like that to trigger all of these sounds that he had with his percussive instruments. Now he could actually program, program them into the electronic kit. And then over the years, he started adding triggers that would trigger off uh, big band sounds and music he could drum to. So that era was from Grace Under Pressure all the way to R30. And then what, I'm, what I call the orchestral era, which was Snakes and Arrows to the end, to R40, where he had whole compositions, uh, both on the acoustic kit and the electronic kit. And he, could, he actually, on occasion, switched back and forth multiple times between the two so that he can perform these compositions. So that those last few years, say from 2007 to 2015, that would call that the orchestral era of Neil Peart's solos. Okay, without further ado, let's rank these solos. Neil Peart's drum solos from worst to best, starting at number 11. Number 11 is the rhythm method from the Test for Echo Tour. Different, uh, as heard on different stages. I think that was an off night for Neil. If you listen to that solo, he's not exactly crisp and clean in his in his roles, and he's a little slower uh, when he does the when he plays on the electronics. It's not as crisp and clean as some of the solos we're gonna talk about later in the video. I think that for that solo, I don't think he was involved with picking which solo would appear on the different stages releases when it was released to the public. I think probably on some other night, there probably was a better solo than the one that they chose for different stages. I'm not going to go into too much all of the reasons why that's the last one, but if you hear this solo and then listen to the other ones in this list, you'll see that all of the other ones were performed better than the one that he performed on the different stages release that was selected to appear on that release. And I think that if he was involved in selecting the solo, I don't think he would have picked this one. I think he would have picked another one. So that's my number 11 pick. Number 10 is All the World's a Stage drum solo from the 2112 tour, as we hear it at the end of Working Man on that release. Now, it's not that there's really anything bad with this solo. It's a very good solo. The issue is that it's an old one. <laughs> it's a, one of his earlier ones. And you can hear the youth of this solo. But what's interesting about this solo is that there's a lot of, there's a few things in there that are the precursor to pretty much all of the solos that come after it. So you have, for example, the double-handed crossover that he does between the snare and the tom, uh, the snare and the floor tom. He does it in that solo. He also plays with the, um, the very popular uh, cowbell pattern that he that he did that he does on pretty almost all of his solos that's the first time we hear it there way back in 1976 and there are a few other things here and there that you hear this solo then you hear some of the other solos later you figure oh uh, I, now I know where that came from if you hear this solo you'll hear bits and pieces of it ahead in the future so there are a lot of things I think maybe stubbornly <laughs> that Neil held on to that he liked he just liked to do them. He just liked to play them year after year after year. And he would do is he would just embellish his solos to in some way or other include these what I call um, pinnacle elements of his soloing, things that he created from the beginning and just kept them pretty much all the way to the end of his career. Number nine in ranking Neil Peart's released official drum solos is the Drumbastica and the story so far, his solo that he played in the R40 tour, the last tour, pretty much in the middle of Cygnus X1. I mentioned Drumbastica because on the nights that they played Headlong Flight, which I think they played that song every night on that tour, R40, 
but he did have that extended solo in the middle that's longer than the solo that's in the studio release of Headlong Flight. But anyway, he had that. And he also had the solo in the middle of Cygnus X1. And I think you could hear a little bit Neil's age in this solo. It was his last solo. He was in his in mid early 60s. Yeah, they were they were all in their early 60s at this point. Uh, a little close edge close to 65. So, you know, these guys are really playing. The fact that they could do that tour at all to me is an accomplishment in and of itself, the three of them. But that Neil could play, even at that age, so hard. And he was very meticulous. You know, there was really nothing wrong with any of his hits or any of his patterns. Um, there really wasn't anything new, per se. I think if you went from night to night in that tour, you'd notice some differences that he would incorporate. But at this point, he's not really creating anything new. I think pretty much everything that he played or things that he played before... And he would use his um, mini marimba, the electronic xylophone there, to trigger an ambience for, for the solo. It wasn't so much that he's using all of these different percussive sounds that he triggers from there. But, yeah, it was basically, uh, this is the end solo, his last solo. And the other solos that will appear later in this countdown, you know, have a lot more in them. But I think it's because, you know, I don't think there was anything else he could do, but he could still play. So, not one of his best solos, but it was still definitely a great solo. Number eight in the countdown to Neil Peart's best published drum solo is A Show of Hands, drum solo on YYZ during the Hold Your Fire tour. This was a very interesting solo. I mean, it shows still his youth, and not only that, but it was a really different solo from the solo he recorded previously, uh, chronologically, in 1981 for YYZ, uh, Exit Stage Left. This was in the Hold Your Fire Tour, 88, 87, 88. It was significantly, significantly different because the solo in 81 was during the acoustic era. Now this is in the electronics era, and he's really incorporating the electronic drums. And there are two versions of this solo. There's one in the video of A Show of Hands, and there's another one in the what was then the LP cassette, you know, DVD, uh, CD, whatever. But there are two different versions. The version on... The CD or the record incorporates the electronic drums, whereas on the DVD, he's pretty much focused on the acoustic kit. But yeah, this is a very bombastic drum solo. This is where he includes like big band sounds, and it was really, really different uh, and um, uh, quite innovative for him anyway. There were some other drummers that were using electronics and, and uh, the like, but the fact that Neil was very open to including all of these sounds, not only in the songs, but in the solo. It was very creative to hear, and it was becoming breaths of fresh air every tour because he had a lot of possibilities to expand his, his repertoire, his abilities, both on the acoustic and the electronics kit. Great, great solo. Number seven on the countdown to Neil's top drum solo is Der Trommler, the drum solo he played during the R30 tour in Frankfurt. Now, this might be a shocker, because this is the most reacted to drum solo on YouTube. I've seen a few reactions to a couple of the other drum solos. There are some solos where I've seen no reaction to them at all on YouTube, but this one is the most popular. So, I'm saying that in Neil Peart's 11 officially published drum solos, this one is number 7. That there are 6 better drum solos than this one. Actually, I think that's quite astounding, because uh, this is one of Neil Peart's longest drum solos. Um, this one, he really incorporates everything in his kit. You know, the electronic, acoustic, back to electronic, playing with the big band at the end, his staple patterns that he plays with his electronic drums. Um, it, incredible. So I understand why this would be such a solo, such a great uh, performance that a lot of people would, uh, want to react to. But I think that they're not aware that there are other solos that might even be more impressive than that solo. So I'm not going to talk too much about how great the, so the solo is because pretty much everybody's seen it. You can check it out. Der Trommler from Germany, Frankfurt. That one is number seven. Number six in the countdown to Neil Peart's, Neil Peart's top drum solo is Der Slagworker. That's the drum solo from the Snakes and Arrows tour. That was the first of the orchestral solos where he had created a whole composition on the electronic kit. Not just different sounds, but pretty much like a song. Very beautiful. 
No. I think he had learned, you know, pretty much he had progressed from the R30 tour. And, you know, I, he just added on that. And it became something that, that was pretty much fresh. Not something that he had done before necessarily in that he... You know, like I said, created a whole composition on the electronics kit. He was very precise. He was very, very fast. And in my previous ranking, many, many years ago on my blog, I actually rated this one his best solo of all. But then, you know, after the years went by, I t looked at everything over after the, their career was over. And I thought, well, actually, maybe not. At the time, I read an article where he, a columnist, was writing an article for, uh, for a magazine, asked Neil if he thought, well, what solo did he think was his best? And he said, this one, the, the current one, which at the time was the one he did in Snakes and Arrows. Because, as mentioned in previous videos, Rush always liked what they did last. So even though many, 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 many people may cite, for example, Moving Pictures as their best record, as their favorite record, if you would ask Rush after releasing Snakes and Arrows as an example, What's their favorite record? They would say Snakes and Arrows because it would, be, it would be their most recent and that would be their favorite. And in the case of the drum solos, that was his favorite. So that kind of influenced me, influenced my my uh, decision on that being the number one. I actually nicknamed that drum solo Arrival because I think he was very comfortable uh, where, where he arrived as far as his playing. But he was very confident uh, of his fluidity, of his speed, everything. So... And, and it came out in that solo. It a, it's a very good solo. I think there are still even better solos than that one. But in any case, it was one that started what I call again the orchestral era of his solos. And there were better ones to come. Number five in the countdown to Neil Peart's best drum solo is the drum solo from the Clockwork Angels tour. Where's my thing? Here it is. Drumbastica and the Percussor. And this was very unique in that he spread out his solo throughout the concert. There were three parts. So the first solo was during Where Is My Thing, the instrumental that originally came out of Roll the Bones back in 91, which is a really good instrumental. They only used it, played it on that tour, and they brought it back for the Clockwork Angels tour. And very, very good, powerful, powerful drum solo. I mean, I think he wanted to prove a point that he still was very strong. And uh, yeah, he was very strong. And so that was the solo in Where's My Thing. And then in another part of the show later when he played Headlong Flight, that's where the middle drum solo was expanded and they called it Drumbastica. And then later in the concert, he did a solo just on the electronics called The, the Percussor. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful drum solo. Um, it, I mean, it wasn't really... I mean, you could call it a drum solo because it was just him, but it was actually... It was a composition. It was... Actually, it's beautiful. I would say that it's hard for me to describe how good it is. You just have to watch it. So that three-part drum solo, that's number five on my list towards Neil Peart's best solo. Number four in the quest to arrive at Neil Peart's best published drum solo is O Baterista. That is the drum solo performed during the Vapor Trails tour as we see in the Rush in Rio DVD. Now, this is a very interesting solo as well, in that it was the first of solos that, you know, during the Paper Trails tour, you know, they were, uh, Rush was on hiatus for five years, so um, the drum solo from Tess Ferreco was pretty much in the distance, and I think Neil had, when he came back, had a really fresh perspective on soloing, although there were a few things that he kept from the previous solo, but he made really good use of all of his toms, especially the floor tom on his left, uh, which that didn't exist prior to 1991, prior to Roll the Bones. That was the first time where, because he had one bass drum, he could actually fit another floor tom over here. So he'd do these patterns going back and forth that were really spectacular. And um, in this solo, Russian Rio, he made really good use of that. The, the sounds of his drums was really, really good. The crew had very little time to put everything together due to rain, but you know, I don't know how they pulled it off, but his drums sounded really good uh, for this solo. And another interesting thing about this solo is that it was pretty different from the solos previous to it and the solos after it. Those solos around this one were kind of similar, whereas this one, he took like kind of a tangent. It sounds very different from his, let's say, modern solos. Still in that electronic... Um, electronics era 
I would call it. But I would say it sounded pretty much unique in that time, which, again, gives it an, a, a bump up in the ranking here. And another thing, this was a Grammy-nominated solo. This was one of the seven times that Rush was nominated for a Grammy. They lost every time. I go over that in a video series, uh, but I'll put a link to the video where I talk about Neil Peart's O Baterista drum solo, which was nominated for a Grammy. I mention who they were up against and who they lost to and why well, I think they shouldn't have lost. But in any case, just go watch that video after you watch this one. But anyway, this was a fantastic solo and very much deserving to be in the number four spot. Number three in the journey to Neil Peart's number one published drum solo is Moto Perpetuo, which was the drum solo during the Time Machine tour. Oh, man, they, you know, I think more, it's more I want to whet your appetite to go watch these solos. This one, as far as in the orchestral era, was the best one. Better than R40, better than Clockwork Angels, better than Snakes and Arrows. This was the top solo from that era. I just encourage you to go watch it. I would say watch the Snakes and Arrows one and then watch this one and, and compare. It's it, Neil Peart is just on fire, spectacular, perfect timing with everything. He has lots of power, lots of precision. That night, that whole concert, they were on. And the band, the band members at times would speak about a whole tour and they would mention that there were very few nights when they were, when they felt that they were perfect or almost perfect, or like spot on that at the end of the night, they were like, wow, that was really good. That didn't happen very often. But this night was one of those nights where everything was, you know, everything was spot on. And this drum solo, Moto Perpetuo, was, was outstanding. Everything was great, just spectacular. Um, yeah, I would just say go check it out. So this is the number three best drum solo by Neil. The number two, the runner-up, the silver medal, number two best drum solo published by Rush and Neil Peart is Exit Stage Left. YYZ, Moving Pictures Tour, 1981. This is the solo that I call the sentimental favorite because a lot of people like this solo as Neil Peart's favorite, uh, as their favorite Neil Peart drum solo. Because, you know, for one, a lot of fans became fans of Rush during the Moving Pictures era, and then Exit Stage Left comes out, and it's like, blows everybody away. And that drum solo that is there. It's a combination of the solos from the previous tours. I mentioned All the World's a Stage uh, back at number 10. And some of the, the solos that were after that were kind of similar to that one. But then in 81, I think Neil came to kind of like a, a plateau, not a permanent, not a permanent plateau, but of skills where he was so precise, so fast, so creative, using all parts of his drum kit. And that solo said to everybody, hey, I'm here. I'm Neil Peart, and I'm an awesome rock drummer. <laughs> I mean, this is a just it's cited from by many as one of as Neil Peart's best drum solo, and you know, I can understand why. It's one of the, I think it's the shortest drum solo in this list. It's only a little over three minutes. Not even I don't think it's even three and a half minutes. But it just packs so much in so little space. No space is wasted, and he's very creative. Like I said, in all parts of the kit. Kind of like, I think that's when he really started composing um, his drum solos. I think he solidified himself as one of the best drummers in the world during that time because of this solo and how popular it made him as a drummer. I mean, he was popular as a drummer before, as a you know acknowledged great drummer. But when this came out, it exploded the whole band really. But you know, everybody's abilities were exponentially more exposed. And this was the perfect solo that Neil Peart could have used to expose himself as one of the world's best drummers. So that drum solo is number two. Okay, so we've gone over 10 of Neil Peart's officially published drum solos. And there, I think, maybe were some surprises there. Maybe not everybody thought that the Frankfurt drum solo was going to be so low on the list. But which is the number one? What is Neil Peart's best published drum solo? Well, that one happens to be the one from the Counterparts tour as published in the DVD, Anatomy of a Drum Solo. This drum solo epitomizes everything Neil Peart is as a drum soloist. And I actually call this drum solo the end of an era. 
And the reason I call it that is because after 90, 93 and 94, Neil Peart was getting antsy about his skills. He thought he had plateaued as a drummer, so he decided to take lessons with Freddie Gruber, kind of like a jazz drummer, and he started using traditional grips. I'll, I'll explain it, so I got the drumsticks right here. So up to this time, Neil Peart was mainly a matched grip drummer. And on occasion, he would, you know, grab his sticks this way, which is a traditional grip, right? But he didn't do that very often. But after 93, after the Counterparts tour, he was very antsy, and he wanted to try something different. So after that, he, he was more jazzy in his drumming and less rock. Although he retained all of his rock drumming skills, but I think he added more of his jazz, more jazz skills after he took lessons with Freddie Gruber. All of Test for Echo, which was the record right after Counterparts, he played it all in traditional grip. So he was a different drummer, basically, after Counterparts. And I think that Neil Peart from Counterparts, Counterparts back, a lot of people like that Neil Peart more than the Neil Peart from Test for Echo forward as far as his drumming goes. Um, I think in general, you know, everybody likes Neil Peart, even to the end, but that drum solo epitomizes everything that Neil Peart was and everything that Neil Peart was going to be afterwards. It had everything. He had he's the rotating drum kit, he had the acoustic kit, which that kit was absolutely beautiful kit. It's actually my favorite drum kit of all of his kits, I believe, would be the counterparts kit. And then he had the electronics kit in the back, and you know, the kit would swing back and you know, would turn around so he can do his electronics uh, playing, and then it would switch back to the acoustic. You know, all of everything that we've known him to play, the, the double-handed crossover, single stroke roll that he's famous for, for playing. And he was very fast, very powerful, had a real gritty attitude. You could see it in his face when he's playing. That's the Neil Peart that a lot of people like. And I think that a lot of people missed from Test for Echo Forward. But this solo pretty much incorporates, it's the all-around drum solo. It has everything that he had, he had played before all of the, the rock drummer that he was uh, with everything that he played with everything that he did afterwards it's all it's all encompassed that solo and it's not the longest solo I think it's seven minutes plus or eight eight minutes something like that but man it is a sight to behold and I think that if we're talking about his best published drum solo I'm saying that the counterpart solo from the anatomy of a DVD an anatomy of a drum solo DVD is his best one. And you can search for it. I'll actually have links to all of the drum solos if they're on YouTube. I'll have it in the description so you can look at these solos yourself. So that's the winner. Counterparts drum solo from Anatomy of a Drum Solo DVD. And there you have it. That's the list. And I'm going to put them right here on the screen so you can see how I rank them. I think you have a lot of fun look, watching these drum solos and see... You can watch them in chrono or hear them because that, there's a couple of them that are only audio. The exit stage left drum solo, which was ranked number two, that's audio only. And all the world's a stage, that one is audio only as well. And also the the fortieth anniversary publication of Moving Pictures, which has another night in the Moving Pictures tour, that has another version of that exit stage left drum solo. But I still think the one in exit stage left from that night is better it's that one is better so i hope you like that ranking i hope to see you then in the next video